So apparently lynching kids is not so bad. So welcome y'all to another food for thought. So y'all, I busted out, <laughs> I busted out the jasmine tea today. So I just, yeah, I have to stay, I have to stay calm. I can't let this stuff stress me the way, <laughs> the way it might be stressing me and certainly not the way that, you know, some of my, you know, red pill folks get upset. And I, I promise y'all, I'm gonna come back to the whole red pill thing. Uh, in a little while, but I want to see, you know, I, I know that my, my good friend the Mad Blender is going to be working on a video there, so it might be more of a collaboration video between the two of us, or I might see what, you know, she got to say about it, and, you know, then maybe just do a response video talking about what she's talking about, you know, and do my own follow-up. Anyway, so, uh, you know, a couple days ago I made a video talking about just kids in general and where kids fit into all of this and all of the rhetoric around, you know, we the, for the kids, got to protect the children, but the fact of the matter is we don't protect the children. You guys know from previous videos of mine, and if you do your own research, you will very quickly learn that about 20,000 children die around the world every day based on, you know, for, un, for unnecessary reasons, totally preventable reasons, right? But how many, you know, what effort, uh, what efforts are there from people in the first world which really control all these things? Or I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say the, the first world because I hate that whole first world, other world, like, does that mean like they're the best world versus like the third best world? I don't even know what that means. So let's forget about that. But people, um, Westerners, generally speaking, Westerners who love living these lives. You know, look at me, I'm surrounded, I'm in the lap of luxury, I'm in Brooklyn in an apartment, and it's a tiny little apartment, but you know, I have a fairly clean surroundings, I have access to the food that I want, I'm sitting here sipping jasmine tea. It's fair trade tea, but you know, it's, regardless of the fair trade, it's probably being, you know, picked and uh, by people who aren't, and, and packaged by people who aren't being paid as much as I get paid to, you know, maybe sit around and stare at a computer screen all day, right? So, you know, it's all about uh, perspectives. But uh, the fact of the matter is we are perfectly willing, it seems, to allow for the exploitation of children and the death of children around the world every day. Okay, I'm not trying to say that I'm better than anyone. This is just the reality of the world. But. I was really shocked after posting that video and talking a little bit about the XXX Tentacion video where he shows the lynching of a little white boy, comparing that to the movie It where we see, you know, the violent deaths of children and, you know, children and just, you know, these harrowing experience being tormented by this murderous clown. Um, uh, that film, the film It, uh, last weekend, having a $60 million weekend, being the top grossing film for September, possibly of all time. In the meantime, people are up in arms about this, you know, this simulated lynching of a little white boy. Well, Sarah French, who is uh, one of the loyal viewers and um, amazing contributor to the channel, um, basically reminded me that around September 13th, when the story about the XXS Tentacion video was breaking in the news and uh, yeah, people were all up in arms about that, there was an actual lynching of an eight-year-old boy in New Hampshire, I believe, by a group of teenagers. Um, the, the little boy was apparently hung the assailants left the scene and the little boy was able to free himself and then ended up having to be rushed to emergency room and was put in a neck brace and now is doing okay. Now it's doing okay. But there's so much talk about how the liberal media blows things out of proportion, but I hadn't even heard of that story. I hadn't even heard the story. I hadn't even heard the story. I heard about the simulated lynching in a music video of a little white boy and how horrendous that was. 
before I heard about the actual lynching of a little black boy. And here's the thing, they're, they're, it's very interesting to me, and this is the, the liberal media, right? Calling the little boy mixed race. So I don't know if any of you have seen the Trevor Noah video, but he makes a really interesting observation. If I am mixed race, I can go any place and say that I am black without anyone blinking an eye. I can say that I'm black. We called Barack Obama black for eight years and still call him black, right? He is black, although we understand that Barack Obama is mixed race. Would, uh, would Barack Obama, even as the President of the United States, would Barack Obama be able to walk into any space and claim that he is white? Trevor Noah says it's a one-way street. It's a one-way street, right? So this is, a, this is a, for all intents and purposes, a black child who was lynched. Um, black in that mixed race or not mixed race, he could claim black and not raise an eyebrow or not raise many eyebrows, but if he tried to pass himself as white, he would, you know, he would, uh, there would be outrage. There would be outrage from everyone, from white people who would say he's not white, you know what I mean? Or white people who would say to him, who are, what are you? What are you, right? And black people who would say, why are you denying the fact that you're black, right? So it's, it works on both sides. I'm not trying to say that anyone is more culpable in that than anyone else. But for the purposes of this story, a black boy was lynched or there was an attempted at lynching of a black boy an eight-year-old black boy who I think has since the incident turned nine and is now a fourth grader so I think we have to be really clear about these things I think we have to be really clear about these things and where our outrage lies right where our outrage lies worse than what happened was the sheriff's response to it was that these teenagers should not have their lives ruined because of an attempted murder um again there's a discrepancy here because we know in communities of color we're seeing teenagers 13 14 years old picked up by police officers uh we see the you know the, the killing of an 11 year old for holding a toy gun, right? So we understand that the way viol the response to violence is very different depending on what community you're coming from. And so it always makes me, um, it, it sort of, it makes me bristle at the many conversations I've had about the incidences of violent crimes in African American communities when a number of teenagers can engage in the lynching, the attempted lynching, and have it not even seen as a crime. Have it not seen as a crime. And I, it, this happens with regularity. This happens with regularity that crimes committed, depending on the community and depending on the assailant, those crimes are not counted as violent crimes. Because they were just kids, so bullying of of, of uh, bullying that happens in high schools. It's called bullying, it's not called violent crime, right? It's not called violent crime, but it's violent crime. So we don't have an accurate count of the incidences of violent crimes that happen in more, let's say, affluent communities. In poor communities, they are seen as violent crimes. In affluent communities, they are seen as kids being kids. They are seen as bullying, right? So it's downgraded somehow and it's had probably has something to do with the fact the targets of the crime as well right how many victims of you know excuse me this might be triggering to some people but how many how many victims of rape don't have that rape considered a rape because of who the assailant is who the perpetrator of that particular crime is so I think it's very shady and shaky of us to think that we can have an open discussion about the incidences of crime, the incidents of crime that happen, the uh, crime that happens in poor communities versus crime that is happening in more affluent communities. And I'm not talking about rich communities, I'm talking about simply more affluent communities where we see the young people in those communities as, as somehow um, more highly valued. The potential of those young people is somehow taken for granted 
Whereas in these poor communities, it is taken for granted that they're just headed to prison anyway, so we may as well get them in there now so we can make that money off those beds, right? So I'm just putting that out there. So a couple of other things before I go, disappointing things, I hung out with a former protege, someone that I spent a lot of time really kind of raising, you know, raising as an artist, spent a lot of time mentoring, a really wonderful person, still truly a wonderful person, came to visit me, you know, since I'm in Brooklyn and they're in Brooklyn, came to visit me and it was great. So the, uh, I've known the person since they were 14 years old. The person is now 28 came to visit me with their new partner, really excited about, you know, to introduce me to their new partner, sat down, so we're having great conversations, and at one point, politics comes up, and it is made very clear that this is, you know, not only a Trump supporter, well, a former Trump supporter, someone who voted for Trump and is now having, you know, buyer's remorse, but proceeded to just rattle off, you know, the top 10, you know, catchphrases for, you know, the, the folks, the red, the folks who are, you know, the, who've taken the red pill, right? So rattled off, you know, you know, black on black crimes, talked about Islam, talked about, you know, SGW, everything, all of these things. And I'm starting to realize that there are people who have absolutely no experience with. There are people who I am certain have never had an encounter with someone that they call an SJW. They hear about SJWs on the internet <laughs> and they hear about SJWs in, through social media and they believe in this type of person. But you know, the person sitting down having a conversation with me and telling me what I believe, and of course these aren't things that I believe and I'm able to say, well, I don't believe that. And the person has no argument because they can't prove whether I believe it or not. But that is their entire argument. It is built upon these fallacies it's built on these fallacies right these straw man arguments and 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 it's still you know it happens on the channel people leave comments and they tell me whatever the new thing is that they're saying over there right and i think it's absolutely ridiculous because i'm having this conversation with this person and i'm saying well you know what do you what really matters to you right i don't know what news you're watching but the news that i'm watching is talking about the hurricanes and the earthquakes they're talking about the wars. They're talking about the, you know, hunger, the starvation, the things that are happening in the world that we could be focusing our energy on to prevent. But I, I suppose that person looks at that and says, well, that would be too hard. So instead, I'm going to address the attitudes of people on the left that I disagree with. I'm going to address the attitudes of people on the left that I disagree with, who I may never meet. Right, and I see that as a more productive use of my time than actually figuring out how to even look around in my neighborhood and, and deal with the issues that people in my neighborhood, my own community, things that are affecting my life and working on those issues with others who live in my community with me, right? Instead of focusing on those things, people would rather, you know, have these, you know, empty quasi-political uh, conversations that are just full of nothing but empty rhetoric about things that the person knows nothing about. Which is why it is upsetting and I don't mean, I'm not going to name this person's name, but the last person that you guys know that I got kind of really upset with, you know, introducing, you know, uh, false evidence, right? They're in introducing evidence that is, is blatantly wrong, is blatantly wrong, and accepting that as the truth. And that is, to me, this is why I'm drinking my chamomile tea, y'all. This is why I'm drinking my jasmine tea today and why I was drinking my cam chamomile tea yesterday because we're in a really, really messy space where there's, I'm sorry, a lot of stu stupidity is on the rise, y'all. Stupidity is on the rise. And if stupidity is on the rise, then what is necessary from those individuals who are really trying to deal with the issues that are the most compelling, the most pressing in our world today? If this fool wants to sit down and talk about, you know, Donald Trump, who goes to Africa, by the way, and speaking to uh, uh, speaking to the leaders of, uh, of several African countries, said, "Wow, the economy in Africa must be doing really, really well. A lot of my friends are coming here to make money." 
Well, baby, people have been going to Africa to make money for the last 500 years. <laughs> that has nothing to do with Africa's economy, baby. It has to do with Africa's resources that everybody wants to get their hands on. So this is the kind of stupidity that we have happening. And y'all have to, y'all gonna have to get mad at me because stupid ass is stupid ass. And that may be one of the greatest issues that we're dealing with today. It is not that SJWs want to stifle our freedom of speech. <laughs> that is not the problem, right? And I don't even want to say that it's the racism that people are laying. It's not who used the word nigga last. It's not the who, it's not who last used the word nigga, right? It's y'all, it's the last, it's the fact that our, the world's resources are being exploited to the point that the world cannot sustain them. Y'all, Earthquakes in Mexico. What is that? Have there been five hurricanes? Five category three, four, five hurricanes in just the last two weeks? I don't know. Something's not right. I'm gonna leave it at that, y'all. That's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourselves. Peace. And I love myself. The way